Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The Adams clasp gains its retentive effect from the engagement of two small loops with the undercut areas on the mesial and distal proximal aspects of the posterior tooth to be clasped. The clasp wire crosses the occlusion in close adaptation with the marginal ridges of the teeth and the wires continue into the palatal area and are completely embedded in acrylic. The first step in clasp construction is to prepare the work model. Approximately one half a millimeter of plaster at the free gingival margin is removed at the mesial and distal buccal proximal aspects to expose an undercut area for the engagement of the retentive loop. The wire itself is constructed from 0 0.025 inch diameter stainless steel wire and 139 bird beak pliers are used. A small loop is bent into a length of the 0 0.025 inch wire. The loop should be approximately one and a half to two millimeters wide in outside dimension. The second bend is a 90 degree bend made in one side of the loop. To create a small extension of loop here about two and a half to three millimeters long. The bend is made so that the straight section is about 30 to 45 degrees to the flat plane of the loop itself. The wire is tried on the work model. The loop is placed in the undercut area and a mark is made where the second loop should begin. A 90 degree angle is bent into the wire. and the loop is completed in the same manner as the first loop. The loop is bent at 30 to 45 degrees to the crossbar section, this straight section of wire. These two prepared loops are intended to engage these undercut areas. With the next bend, we begin to sweep the wire towards the occlusal crossing. A 90 degree bend is made in the outside portion of the loop and the wire is tried back on the model. The wire is bent to its point of first contact with the marginal ridges. A wax pencil mark is made and another bend is made to extend it across the occlusion. Usually a straight section of wire will adapt well to the two marginal ridges. A mark is made where the wire begins to sweep down into the pallet. It's adapted to be about a millimeter off the palatal tissue. A small loop for retention is bent into the end of the wire that extends into the palate. The second half of the Adams clasp is bent in exactly the same way 
and this is the completed clasp. It engages the undercut areas on the buckle aspect very firmly. It crosses the occlusion in close adaptation with the marginal ridges of the teeth, and it extends down into the palatal tissue, the palatal acrylic, about one millimeter off the tissues. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.